I love my Steam Deck. It's basically the Nintendo Switch of PC gaming in that it's been a runaway sales success, it's got a great library of games, fantastic homebrew potential, and it's an emulation powerhouse. Actually, for real though, it's literally the Nintendo Switch of PC gaming. Like, it actually plays Switch games through emulation. It's kind of nuts. So naturally though, I have begun to wonder something. What is the next step in Steam Deck evolution? Should it get thinner? An OLED screen, perhaps? More power? Well, I'm sure we'll get to see what Valve has cooking over there in Bellevue soon enough. But in the meantime, I'm imagining an alternate Steam Deck. One with a cracked screen, no controls, and a barely functioning keyboard. And what do I do best on this channel? It's making my dreams into a reality, damn it! And that's just what I intend to do today with the Steam Deck. Or rather, the Steam Deck's OS. Alright, I got this laptop for literally free from a family member. And you can probably figure out why. Nonetheless, according to the sticker, it is a uh, Intel i7, which means it's a fast gaming machine, but it could always be faster. So I've got a 480 gig Kingston SSD that we're going to install. And while we're at it, we'll just, we'll just take the screen off. I mean, it's not doing us any good. I'll just use a monitor. <laughs> what, what is going on in here? There's just a, what is this? Just a little block and a cable tie. Someone has been in here. You know, I think I know what that block and cable tie is for. I think that is to make it so the SSD doesn't slip out of the SATA port. And then this is here to make sure the SSD doesn't move. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be putting them right back where I found them. Oh, uh, wait. No, but before we do that... I did say I was gonna take it apart and take the monitor out, so I still gotta do that. Not only do we have light, we also have technology. We also have to take the SSD back out. Technology has failed us. I'm just stripping the piss out of it. Cool. We have ancient technology. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna be a little less of a um, ape with it this time. There we go. Oh my, you know what it is? I'm hitting the forward button on accident and it's absolutely decimating the screw. Imagine how much better stuff would go if I actually thought about literally anything I did. Dude, these screws do not want to come off. Oh my god, I went forward again! What is wrong with me? And now, <laughs> now my head is stripped, dude. This was supposed to already be done. Alright. Backwards. Fantastic. Dedotated wham. Hello there, non-Toshiba brand battery. This thing is sick. Okay, we should about be at the point where the shell should come off. Okay, unintuitively, I think this thing comes apart with the keyboard actually pulling up rather than the shell pulling down. So I'm gonna attack it from that angle. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, I was going to say I'm literally about to destroy it, but I mean, it's, it's kind of already there. This is what happens to all the bad laptops. They get sent to me. This is their punishment for being bad. Dude, there's not even like, uh, this is terrible. All right, we've done it. We've made it even worse. You know, I'm at the point where I'm considering just pulling the motherboard and just using the motherboard with a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. But we have gotten far enough to get to the hinges for the screen. So, we will continue on that journey. Okay, you know what? Let's do like a sanity check real quick. Does this thing even still work after being absolutely mangled? Oh god, where's the power button? Okay, let's reference the uh, shell here. Okay, power button's right here. Is it connected to anything? No. Okay, so that means there's probably a button on the motherboard. Around this area, this thing looks like a button. Nice. Insane. It still works. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it still works. It's hanging on by a thread.
Okay, you know something I'm realizing here after I took the LCD off is that the Wi-Fi antenna wires are going into the uh, screen. So we might not have the greatest Wi-Fi connection here, but if it becomes a problem, which it probably will because there's no antennas, um, I've got this USB 3 absolute chungus Wi-Fi adapter we can just plug in, so it should be fine. Dude, I just realized that this looks like the, uh, the Gene Splicer from Jimmy Neutron. I'm gonna edit in one right next to it. Dude, look at this thing. It's like a one-to-one -one copy. Now that we have the LCD removed and the butter knife out of frame, what I'm gonna do is connect it up to the monitor and make sure that we can get video output over HDMI with like the BIOS and stuff. Also, for those of you who saw my GameCube Mini V2 video, this might look kind of familiar. This isn't the exact fan that I used, but this is the same style of uh, blower fan where you can intake air from the top or from the bottom actually, and then it just blows it out straight that way. Yep, same exact kind of fan. Free Windows 7 Home Premium Key. Who wants it? Aw, oh, shoot, I forgot to put the SSD back in. Hmm, that is not good. I don't think the monitor works in the BIOS. I'm gonna grab a VGA cable and see if it'll work with that. All right, how about now? Yeah, still nothing. That's not good. Okay, so I reconnected the original LCD, and you can kind of see, well, you can see in the corner there that the PC has posted. It's just trying to look for a boot device now. So I'm gonna kind of just keep that over there and then hope that later on it'll work on the monitor. Anyway, continuing on, this flash drive has the Holo ISO installer on it, and that's what's gonna let us install SteamOS. Dude, the fan is going insane right now and we're not even doing anything. Yeah, I'm slightly worried because the keyboard doesn't even work right now. I have no idea. Hey, cats, chill. I don't know what the BIOS key is on uh, Toshiba, so I'm gonna mash. Oh, wow, it already missed. Wow, I really picked the worst laptop to do this on, huh? All right, mashing F12. See if we can get into the BIOS. Still says a reboot and select proper boot device. <coughs> you know, maybe I should have installed SteamOS and then ripped the keyboard out. Okay, so things appear to be happening on the LCD when I press buttons. So I, I guess this is the setup until the USB keyboard and the monitor start working. The fan is going so hard, this is insane. The fan is blowing like no air, actually. There's like zero airflow. Probably not good. It's spinning, but there's no air going through it. What's the deal with that? Cool, so I've come to the conclusion that the F12 key just doesn't work because I can hit other keys and it does something. And you hit F12, does nothing. USB keyboard does nothing. You can't do anything at all. And I know obviously hitting F12 right now won't take me to the BIOS, but here, I'll restart it. I'm mashing F12. Yeah, nothing. So, I don't know. I guess I'll just try another keyboard. Nothing says good idea quite like a Corsair keyboard missing a good chunk of its keys, including all the F keys. We've got uh, LEDs. Nah. Still nothing. Okay, before I resort to violence, I'm going to try and take apart the keyboard and see if I can't fix the F12 key. Dude, like a pound of human slime came out of this thing when I took the frame off. That's nasty. All right, it still didn't work, so we are officially resorting to violence. Oh, oh, I think I got it. Do you see that? Look at that, the screen's flickering. Okay, that's a good sign. I think I'm, that means I made F12 work again. Let's see. I'm just gonna kinda bob that around in there. No, come on. Please. You gotta be kidding me, man. It just won't do it. It refuses. You know, actually, I wonder if this thing has a CMOS battery because then I could just pull it and the BIOS might reset or it might go straight to the BIOS or something. I'm running out of options here, so uh, I think I'm gonna try that. Oh, that's why the fan wasn't turning. It's caked in dust. <laughs> Dude, there's a spider in here. Dude, there's a spider in here. <clears throat> Not anymore. I've done it. I have found the CMOS battery. And I'm literally just going to cut one of the legs off and call it a day. Actually, no, I'm just gonna take the whole thing off. Oh, dude, this, this was just in the fan. Gross. Okay, we're going to just kind of hope 
that resetting the BIOS made it so USB keyboards work. And we're gonna turn it on and see what happens. Oh shoot, dude, we got a Toshiba screen now. Heck yeah. Okay, sweet. Okay, so we have reset the BIOS, perfect. But the keyboard is still not working, so I'm gonna plug in the OG keyboard once again. PC gaming is easy. Hey, look at that, the BIOS, we did it. Oh, select the display to be used when the computer is started. Perfect. Well, now that it's plugged in, let me restart and see what happens. Oh, yo, it's popping up on the monitor now. Perfect. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. All right, let me tell you what PCBWay does. They specialize in prototyping and low-volume production of printed circuit boards. You know, these things. They really are a one-stop shop for all your electronic prototyping needs. They do standard PCBs, advanced multi-layer HDI PCBs, flex PCBs, and the cherry on top is that they'll even give you the option to have them pre-assembled for you at their factory. And in addition to PCBs, they're also branching out into some new services that includes 3D printing and CNC machining. Personally, I am really excited to give those services a try, since I've always wanted to have the shells of my projects printed professionally. And CNC machining? Oh my god, it could open up a world of new options for custom heat sinks in my mini consoles. I am so excited that I get to work with PCBWay. New users get a $5 welcome bonus on their first order, and 10 PCBs are just $5, so it's literally just free. Plus, their build time is only 24 hours. Pre-assembly services start at $30 for 10, plus you get free global shipping. And if anything I talked about piqued your interest, head down to the link in the description to see what PCBWay can offer you. Still can't use the keyboard, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so we can now boot the flash drive. So I'm gonna try that and then hope that Linux will pick up the keyboard at least. Oh, it didn't work, what? Okay, I think we have to change the boot mode to UEFI. Dude, I have a horrible feeling that this thing can't run UEFI OS's. Okay, so there's some software out there called Duet and Refind, and this should let me boot EFI on a legacy system, so I'm gonna give this a shot and see if it works. All right, I've got the Refind and Duet on this flash drive right here, so we're gonna try and boot off of this flash drive, and then from there, boot off of the Holo ISO installer. We'll see if it works. Okay, seems like we can only boot off of one USB thing at a time. So, uh, I'm just gonna take the A data flash drive out for now, the one that has the Holo ISO installer, and at least see if we can boot the EFI bootloader thing. Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, that's sick. <laughs> but error art. Oh, that's good. But error art again, what the heck? Okay, so the bootloader would not boot on this stupid no name flash drive. So luckily we've got a, uh, it's all about TASM flash drive, which I'm sure is much more reliable. It is simultaneously doing something and nothing at the same time. Great, so now the flash drive's just gone. Okay, I can see that it's booting the USB over here, but I can't read anything because the screen is destroyed. Okay, so now I'm using a different tool because none of this shit is working at all. Boot Windows PE from HD1. I don't think I have Windows PE on anything. Oh, those are both HD1. I don't know if this program is seeing the Holo ISO flash drive. MS DOS, no name. Mm. Nice. Okay, Holo ISO is on the flash drive. Let's see what happens. Come on, please. Oh, no, it didn't work. Ah! New, 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 new plan. I'm gonna take the SSD and install the Holo ISO installer to this and then use the installer for Holo ISO to install to itself. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I'm really running out of options. Okay, here's the game plan. Use the AIO boot tool to boot the SATA drive, which currently has the installer for Holo ISO on it, and then hope that Holo ISO can install Steam Deck OS onto the drive that's currently running as the installer. Oh, you guys see that? Arch ISO? That's the Holo ISO installer. <laughs> Why? Dude, I'm at the point where it would be easier to, like, raise the Antichrist than boot Steam Deck OS on this laptop. Huh. We've somehow made it to some kind of EFI BIOS? Maybe? I don't really know. Bruh, I think Enter is pressing itself. <laughs> at what point do you just say, maybe I should just not use this laptop? Where, where is that point? I obviously have not gotten there yet, considering I'm still trying. Boot attempt number 1245. Doesn't even pick up the flash drive anymore. Uh! I yearn for the sweet release of death. Oh? 
Wait, something is going on on the other screen. Hold on. Let's see if I can switch it over. Okay, the monitor won't connect, but something is going on down there. It looks like we're in like a different BIOS or something. Maybe like a boot menu. USB device or EFI USB device one. That's a good sign. Oh, dude, this is the screen. Oh, come on. It won't switch to the monitor. Okay. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Steam OS installer. Let's fing go. Okay, I don't know which kernel I should use though. We get like one shot probably. NVIDIA and what did I say? Higher compatibility in general? All right, sure, I'll take it. Let's go. I don't even care if it's not on the right monitor. Please boot. Please, we've, we've worked so hard. Please. Ah, dude, I'm at my breaking point. Oh. Oh, no. oh, okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. This is the uh, the boot up stuff for the, the Holo ISO installer. You can see, see uh, Arch ISO right up there. Oh man, oh man, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere, let's go. My biggest fear is that once we get this installed, we still will have to find a way to boot Steam Deck OS itself, which is also EFI. It also doesn't help that I have absolutely no idea how we got to this point. And I'm also hoping that whatever's on the screen is supposed to be happening. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. We're booting, boys, we're booting, yes! Please, we've come so far. <gasps> there it is, there it is! <laughs> Dude, the single brain cell that I have left is pumped right now. Oh, now is probably a good time to plug in the, um, the USB keyboard and see if that works. I can hit the numlock button and the LED comes on, so I'm pretty sure it works. There's, there's, uh, stuff happening on this screen. Okay, there we go. We are in the installer. All right, we're halfway there. Oh, shoot. I forgot you have to be connected to the internet to run this. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Do we have any Wi-Fi? Mm, no, not a chance. Okay, so let me plug in that USB Wi-Fi adapter and see if we can get on a network here. Okay, USB Wi-Fi adapter does not seem to be working. This is gonna be an issue. Okay, I may be able to hook it up to Ethernet. Let me see. Okay, we are hooked up to an incredibly poorly performing Ethernet network connection. I'd be surprised if we got even like 20 megabits from this, but it should be enough to run the installer. No, it still says no internet. We're on the internet. Oh, but the date is all wrong. Hold on, maybe that's it. All right, let's see if we have an internet connection now. Nice, okay, it's updating. All right, installer is updated. Now I have to run it again. This is where the magic happens, everybody. Let's go. Okay, so now we have to select the version of SteamOS that we want to install. And we want the one that's gonna make the whole thing look like an actual Steam Deck. So we're gonna get the full Steam OS 3 experience. I believe that we're booting the installer off of the uh, flash drive. So I think we're good to wipe the hard drive, which is SDA. Erase the entire drive, begin installation, and then hope for the best, I guess. Oh, okay, enter host name for the installation. Not sure what this means, but you can kind of enter whatever you want here. So I'm just gonna put user. And then password, you just put whatever you want. I'm definitely not a Linux expert, so I kind of just do what works with this stuff. And I could be doing some awful stuff. But if you've watched the video up until this point, you would know that uh, awful stuff is kind of all I do. All right, we're gonna go user again. I really like the name user. Oh boy. Error, failed retrieving files, something about fonts. Uh, okay. It's probably fine. Uh, well, it got pretty far. I don't know. Let's just try restarting and seeing what happens. Wait, the time changed to 8 p.m. Bruh, that's probably why. All right, let's see what happens. We may have to install it again. That would suck. Oh, looks like it did install. All right, SteamOS, let's go. I got a bad feeling that the Steam Deck UI didn't install properly. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just try and install the OS one more time. All right, press any key to exit. My guys, it has taken like actually this entire day to get this working. All right, SteamOS, going to go ahead and select that one to boot. All right, I've been fiddling with it for a little bit, and we're going to switch gears and try a different OS. I don't think Holo ISO is going to quite work. I think it's a Vulkan issue with the Intel graphics that are built into the CPU. I don't think they support Vulkan, and Gamescope is trying to launch with Vulkan, and it's just not working. But there is another implementation of SteamOS 3 that I'm going to go ahead and try, and it's called WineSap OS. Winisap OS? I'm not sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and try that because holy crap. I just want to play a game on this thing, goddammit. Alright, I've got Winesap OS or whatever the heck it's called installed to the SSD now. We're gonna go ahead and try and boot that. Wow. It was that easy? It was that easy. I, I really should have tried this first. 
I don't know the login. Let me Google it. Oh, it's just the username. Unbelievable. Just like that. We're in it. I don't like it when red bar makes me think error. All right, select your desired graphics driver. Intel, of course. You know, interestingly, I'm not seeing Steam on the desktop. Do you want to enable swap? Recommended. Sure. Swap size, eight gigs. Sure. I'm qualified to make these important Linux decisions. Do you want to change the current locale? Sure. Do you want to see all available locales? Sure. Cool. Yeah. Yep. I sure know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you want to change the current time zone? No, I already did that. Do you want to install Steam? Yes. Okay, there we go. Maybe they just can't legally distribute the ISO with Steam or something like that. I don't know. Probably not. But you never know. Well, after 20 years, we have another prompt. Do I want to install Google Chrome? Ah, why not? All right, we got a super cool uh, task failed right here. So that's awesome. Okay, well, it's still doing stuff. It said, please reboot to apply changes. We're gonna go ahead and reboot. Hope for the best. We've got a button that says Steam Deck. I'm clicking it. Nice. Cool. You know what? I'm sick of it. No more, no more terminals. No more text. No more Toshiba laptop. Goodbye. Well, we sure did try, didn't we? To answer the question, can I run Steam OS on the worst laptop I own? Uh, no. No, I can't. Well, that's probably gonna be it for this one. Join me next time when I try and install SteamOS on a, a PS4 or some stupid sh**. See ya.